Hello everyone, uh, my name is Roger Gallegos, founder and owner of Beacon Marketing. I wanted to check in and talk to you today about being a leader in your industry. This is something that I wrote about for Beacon Marketing's blog several months ago, but I wanted to revisit it because I think it's an important part of being a business owner and what and what it could do for you for long term success. And that's trying to be a leader in your industry. That uh, a leader in your industry is somebody that other competitors look towards your um, the your customers and even the vendors or people that you you do work with look towards you. And this doesn't mean you're the biggest company or the most profitable. It just means that you set the tone in some way. It could be through processing, through customer service. There's something that you do in your business that sets the tone for it. Uh, a good example on a grand scale is someone like Apple. Apple set the tone for the telecommunication industry with their their phones and the way they look at it. If you look at the phones now, the design, that was largely what Apple did. And so they set the tone for that industry. And you could do that for your industry uh, through a variety of ways. Now, I'm a marketer, so it's not going to be too surprising to hear that from my point of view, marketing is one of the best ways you could do that. And I want to, I'll talk to you about how marketing can help you specifically become a leader, but I want to talk to you about the benefits first of being a leader in the industry and what that could get for you. The, the first benefit is being proactive. Now there's a difference between being proactive and reactive. When you're, re, when you're reactive, you're, all, you're always behind the eight ball. You wait for something to happen and then you react to that. And that could cause a, multiple, a multitude of problems because you're waiting for things to happen and you're not able to plan for them. Now, when you're proactive, you're able to prepare, prepare for difficult uh, situations, whether that be a downturn, and in, in, in uh, clients and sales, or maybe um, have a product that's not available, or uh, construction in your area that that, lo that lowers traffic. You're able to foresee these problems and be able to plan for them and have contingencies. So it's like this hits, you're not overly stressed. It may not be fun, but you have a plan on how to do with this. And, you, and because you're a, when you're a leader, you're able to see these things and take the time to evaluate and plan three, uh, six, nine months in advance. Um, the other thing is you're able to take advantage of opportunities that come up, whether that be immediate opportunities or something that you see in the future. So you can sit there and say, there's something happening around the holidays. So let's plan for that eventuality so when it comes we're already ready we have our messaging for our marketing coming on we have uh, inventory ready to go we have staff trained when you're proactive when you're a leader in your industry that you put you in that situation to be that the other thing allows you to be flexible when you're proactive you have all these contingencies all of these plans of so one thing doesn't happen you go on to the next when you're reactive you don't have time for that you have one plan and if it doesn't happen then you're kind of up a hill with nowhere to go. So being proactive allows you to be flexible, to, to enact several different plans. And then if something doesn't happen the way you plan or something changes, you're able to change that. You're able to change how your response uh, would be. Um, the next thing is save time and money. Uh, we've discussed the part about preparing for situations and difficult times. Well, part of that is saving time and money. I've seen it uh, numerous times where uh, a, a company who wasn't proactive, who wasn't uh, you know in a position to be a leader, something happened and they had to devote all the resources. They had to stop what they were doing to attend to that one problem. That meant uh, a loss of productivity in other areas. That meant uh, maybe maybe upsetting other clients. So when you see those things, that costs time and money because of the, the resources that they had to devote to this new problem they couldn't devote the resources to something else. It's the opportunity cost that you you lose out on. And the last thing, this might be the biggest thing of all, it's just peace of mind. When you're a leader and you're being proactive, you can kind of not necessarily rest on your laurels, but you, you're at a greater ease knowing that you're ready for what may happen. Now, this is doesn't mean you ever get to just stop being ready, stop preparing because things change, our environment change, but because you're in that proactive set, uh, stage, you're in that proactive mentality, you know what to do. You know how to react to changes. Uh, now that we know the benefits of being proactive and, be, and being a leader, how do you get there? What's the step for being, okay, I understand, Roger, that sounds great. How do I get from point A to point B? Um, well, like I said, in my opinion, marketing is the way you do that. 
And you'll hear me say this in, in multiple uh, ways. And if we ever meet or you ever sit down with me, uh, marketing, in my opinion, is very simple. It is the act of letting people outside your organization know how you can make their life better. That ultimately is it. That's the base premise of marketing. Um, so if you're able to do that effectively, you're able to grow your business, bring revenue, and do other things. And one of those things is maybe become a leader. So how do you do that? First and foremost, and this is another thing that I, I will will say probably ad nauseum, but is you have to develop a strategy with your marketing. It does not do any good to just go out there and start uh, employing different marketing tactics because you don't know what's going to work. You don't know uh, what is effective and what may not be effective if you don't know what you're trying to achieve overall and to begin with because you're just trying things. And it can't be just we want more customers, we want more money. Uh, if you're a for-profit business, that is uh, inherently known. That's what for-profit means. You're there to make some money. So that uh, is the goal of every business. But what do you want to do? Do you want to, how do you want to uh, get those profits? Do you want to sell more of this product or more of this service or book more of these type of clients? So when you understand that aspect, then you're able to develop a strategy around that and be able to market for that. Uh, the next step is speak with your team. You have your team. Your team knows. They're, they're on the front lines. They're talking to your uh, customers. And they see these things. They see what works, what doesn't work. So speak to them. Have them show you what may or may not be working. And then when they figure, when they, when they have a better clue, then when you have a better clue what, what what's going on, then you can make changes to, to your process. And that, and that could help uh, position yourself to be a leader. Um, the other thing is state your goals. I, I read this uh, somewhere and it, it's kind of helped me when you when you speak your goals and you put it out there, you put a pressure on yourself because you're, you're making it known to the world that this is what I want to do. Um, like, for instance, when I started Beacon Marketing, I went out there and I told people I was starting a marketing company. And it was it was something I was going to do and I was excited to do. But then there was added pressure because next time I saw that person, they would have asked me about the marketing company. So they were going to say, like, how's things going? So I wanted to make sure I, I told them good news, if nothing else. I mean, I wanted to do it because I wanted to be successful, but I also wanted to be able to say, yeah, hey, this is going good. So state your goals. Don't be afraid. Uh, the other thing is be active in the community. Get your name out there. Get your product out there. Get your service out there. And, and when I say be active, don't just go out there and talk about yourself and talk about your business. Learn, try to learn what other people are doing. See, be a resource for your community. If you do that, then you could be a leader. They, then people start coming to you. They, even if it's not to do with your industry, they could just say, oh, this person, you, you know, Roger knows what he's doing or or Mary knows what she what, knows her, her information about this, and they start coming to you. And then if they start seeing you for other things, then when it comes to your business, then they say, well, you know, Roger really knows about this. Um, the thing in being an industry, and this goes with marketing in all aspects, is do your homework. Uh, understand the changes that, that's going on in your industry. Yeah, in this day and age, you hear it all the time, like technology is coming up, and, and uh, what, what's the old adage, uh, the only constant is change. Um, and that seems to be happening at a more rapid pace. What's true today may not be true tomorrow. What's working today may not be working in six months. So stay on top of the industry trends, you know, it, w whether that means subscribing to a blog, following certain um, uh, influencers on, on, on social media, and maybe you can become one of those influencers eventually. But be involved, be on community boards, understand what's going on. So you, if you're able to do that, then you're able to start developing and understanding trends and that will help your proactivity. That will help you become a leader and then you're able to speak more intelligently about what's going on in your in your business. Uh, the last one is um, don't let your ego get away. Ask for help. Uh, if it has something to do with your business directly or indirectly, or if it's just something you want to know about and you can't quite grasp it, Raise your hand, send out a message, ask for help. There's no there's no shame in going out there and asking people to give you a helping hand because then that that just shows that you're above uh, not asking for help. And it's very important to understand what resources are out there and utilize those resources to your benefit because there's so much information out there, there's so much knowledge out there that it would be foolish. A lot of it's free. A lot of it's our, our blogs and information, uh, YouTube, YouTube channels, the Instagram, IGTV, which I, which I put in this video for, for both uh, Instagram uh, TV and 
uh, YouTube. So it, it's it's almost silly not to utilize those resources. So many of them are free and they can help you in so many uh, in a variety of ways. So try to find something that is to your benefit and learn. Um, so I mean, so that that's the nutshell. So what you want to do is. Uh, to recap, is try to be a leader in the industry. Find ways to do it. And, and to me, it starts with marketing. It starts with the strategy. And then it blossoms from there, from going into processes, asking your team, being upfront with your goals, stating what you want to do, uh, be active in your community, do your homework, learn more about your industry, and then don't ask for help. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Um, on that note, if you need help from me, if you have any questions about marketing or about anything in general, please talk to me. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, you can message me or uh, uh, you can even give me a call. My number is 505-585-4487. Again, that's 505-585-4487. I'd love to talk to you. love to uh, hear what about your business or any questions that you may have. Um, so that's it. Again, this is Roger Geigas from Beacon Marketing. Look forward to checking in with you guys again. Bye.